to let you unmute yourself. So now should work. Hopefully. Yes. Yeah, that worked perfectly. Listen, just I'd like to thank Christian for, for pulling this together. I think it's a great facility to have and long may it continue. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Doug Farrell. I'm a co-founder and director of Method Capital. We're an Irish-based company established over four years ago with the aim of bringing project-level capital <clears throat> to the sustainability sector, specifically in the asset-heavy space. The challenge we set ourselves was to find founder-centric capital, which would shift clean tech entrepreneurs and project developers away from the incremental growth path that they, that they were on into a more exponential growth path. Uh, I suppose we achieved this, which is our key differentiator from other project financiers, in that we have moved the loan to value ratio from the standard 65% up to 100%. This has two consequences. You've no need to raise project equity and you now have an exponential path to roll out multiple projects. Uh, we act as an intermediary. We have nine institutional funding partners who provide the capital and typically our funders are targeting an IRR of between nine and 13%, depending on the technology, the geography and the risk profile. Our main markets of activity at the moment are North America and Europe. Uh, as a company, we're technology agnostic, so long as high ESG credentials can be demonstrated. Uh, three years ago, we would have seen little to no biochar projects coming across our desk. But the emergence and maturity of CO2 removal certs have had a transformative impact on financial models, not to mention the huge body of research that has been done into the soil amendment properties of the biochar itself. We are constantly monitoring different markets and technologies and identify various trends that emerge. And the following are a few standouts in the biochar space. When assessing the bankability of any project, we focus on the cash flows. For a biochar project, we see the key contracts would be your feedstock, your biochar sales, your corks revenue, heat and power sales. We typically require mm -hmm. these contracts to be for a term matching the tenor of the debt. And most of the financial models I've looked at in the biochar space, a 10 year model allows them to fully amortize that debt. So this is where we have encountered major problems in the biochar market. Whilst there doesn't seem to be a problem getting your feedstock contract on a long-term mm -hmm. basis, the biochar and carbon credit sales are much more problematic. From a financier's perspective, a project developer saying that he or she will have biochar and corks to sell on the merchant basis, it just doesn't simply work from a project finance perspective. Um, we're of the, view, of the view that markets matures and off takers will start to take a more longer term view and be more willing to enter these required contracts. If you throw your mind back to incineration projects in the EFW space, when they were in their infancy, they had huge problems in getting long term contracts for their waste from the waste providers. But it was only when there was a certain realization that those incineration projects would not start without those waste contracts that operators realized that it was a two-way traffic. They needed to move waste, so this was a good route for them. Now, if you talk to any of the big waste providers in Europe, you know, 10-year-plus contracts for their MSW are commonplace. Uh, another trend we're seeing is, is the concept, and this is something that it wasn't really touched on today, but it's a trend that we have seen pop up every now and again, which is linking the carbon credits to the actual physical biochar so that one party would effectively have to purchase both. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but, you know, if there is, if it does, um, I, we would see the impact as being negative in that it will narrow down the addressable market for the sale of both those two commodities. Um, Metal Capital likes to engage early with developers to assist them in structuring contracts, including the EPC requirements. Given the relevant small size of projects to date in that sub 20 million range, it's often very difficult to get a full EPC wrap, which would include throughput guarantees. We have been helping uh, OEMs and other project developers in finding suitable insurance products to kind of cover over the gaps that are in there, such as technology performance insurance, which is becoming more commonplace. And indeed, we've actually seen some of the OEMs themselves are getting accredited as being eligible for TPI cover as part of their sales package to end users. Um, typically, we're only in a position to support projects once they're shovel ready. 
So we don't take permitting or licensing risk. It, it, everything has to be in place before our capital can be moved. Uh, but we're regularly asked, do we fund pre-development expenses, you know, such as that final permitting, you know, the last 500,000 that's needed to get a project shovel ready. And typically we have to decline, but we do help these, these developers, um, but outside our core funding partners. In, in the US, it, it's a straightforward process. There are pre-dev funders out there. They typically look for a 2x return on their money over a 24-month period and also look at a modest equity position as well. In Europe, the pre-dev funders can't be found. They're certainly keeping a very low profile. Um, and even though our US cohorts say they will like exposure or would like exposure in the European market, they haven't come across yet. Um, now, there are other solutions that can help us both here and, and the US, and that's the concept of, of selling pre, pre-approved corks. Um, now, the concept has been around for a few years. Um, it, it didn't really work because this, the seller of the pre-corks, apart from taking a large discount, also didn't actually get paid for the contract until they were actually in production, when typically that's when you don't need the money. You need it pre, pre-construction. Um, but we have seen now is an emergence of um, bilateral sales agreements between corporates who want to buy the corks and developers who need that final slug of capital to get their project shovel ready. And I suppose the problem that has arisen in that market is that the buyer of those pre-approved corks sees themselves as taking on um, a huge amount of risk in terms of non-delivery and I mean, everyone on the call today knows that projects wither on the vine for reasons way beyond the control of the developers or promoters. Um, so what we have done is we've been working closely with some insurers and we now have an actual insurance product that will underwrite the delivery of those corks for the quantum that it cost that purchaser. So now that we've taken the risk away from both parties, so for for, for, for no reason, um, or no blame, if you like, on the developer. If the project does not go ahead, the corks are not delivered, the actual purchaser of the pre-corks can claim on the policy and get their investment back. So we do a lot of work with insurers and with developers to try and <clears throat> typically, I suppose, we're looking for gaps in the proposition. And if there are gaps, we need to find products that are there to cover them up, such as insurance. Um, we, we like to engage early. We'd much prefer to have an early engagement with a developer or OEM rather than being late. We're currently engaged with over 700 companies globally in terms of what they're trying to do. Some are just out of the lab, out of university, and some are in different stages of development. But you know, we're what we're trying to do is help them on that journey to create a bankable project. Um, so listen, thanks for that. And I'll hand you back to Christian. Thank you very much, Doug. Um, it's a, a different view on the on the budget market. I uh, will appreciate it um, from that point. So um, we have time for a very quick question. If anyone wants to uh, raise uh, their hand or write something into the chat, um, otherwise um, you you have the name and the uh, company name from Doug, so you can follow up if you have a project that uh, you want to get um, financed, potentially. Um, yeah, I think that we, we have engaged with quite a few, both in both in the US and Europe, quite a few project developers, and it, it always comes down to trying to get those long-term contracts, which what that, and that's what makes it bankable. Um, it's really difficult, um, particularly we see on the, bio, the physical biochar sales, getting someone to commit to a long-term contract. It's just, it's it's very different. Now, as I said, I think the market's going to change. Relevant parties are going to emerge as being the, the main purchasers of these products. Um, and they're going to want to secure their own feedstock for whatever they in turn are doing. So I think it's just a question of, it's a nascent market, even though paralysis is is as far from folk as you, as you could get, it's still falling into that kind of folk type scenario because of the lack of ability to put the relevant contracts in place. But, you know, we're hoping that will change. Yes, I, th I think I think we already see some signs in Europe, at least uh, from more industrial interest um, to, to set up projects. Um, thank you very much.